a Florida State University program in interdisciplinary computing production. Essentially, you know, when I created this course, I, I needed to cater to a whole lot of different degree programs. There were a lot. I'm, I actually am the director of a program called Interdisciplinary Computing. And so what my job is, is to develop technology courses that meet the needs of all different types of majors. And this is one of the first courses we, we designed. And it was basically because there were so many departments that wanted this course. And so we needed to cater to the needs of information technology students, design students. Hey, how you doing? Um, business students. I mean, all different kinds of students. But those, those three different majors have different kind of goals they want out of a web design course. So we tried to kind of weave those goals all into, together into one class. All right, so I thought it's, we'd talk about essentially what, what we did was we broke the course down into four areas. Visual design, functional design, technical skills, and communication. Communication, another department that's very interested in web design. All right, so I thought we'd start off just talking about this concept of design. You're in web design, right? Just want to make sure you didn't wander into the wrong class here. Um, what is design? Let me put it to you to answer that question. What is, what is your interpretation of design? Anybody? Pretty scary first question for a class, isn't it? It's a very broad term. How about if we deal with what are some components of design? What is a component of design? Instruction? In, in what way? No, uh, construction. Construction. Okay, good. I was, I was at a loss with the instruction. <laughs> construction. Yeah, how do you build something? And what are your concerns in, when you're building something? Do you have the right dimensions? Or something like that? Is it going to fit? What other concerns do you have when you're building something? Yep. The aesthetics of it. How does it look? Now, if you're building something, uh, would the aesthetics be something you start off thinking of at the beginning? Well, it depends what you're building, right? Yeah. Okay, let's say, um, let's say you're building a gym shoe. Oh, I got some new gym shoes. I bought them because they were really cool looking, I thought, uh, and totally nerdy. Uh, so if you're building a gym shoe, what would the, be the, one of the first considerations you, you thought about? Pardon me? Comfort, all right, yeah. Um, and, and their function, right? I mean, how are they going to support your foot? That's, that's kind of what you're getting at, right? Yeah. And so you, you're kind of looking at function, and then what else are you going to be looking at? You know, what are the, you know people aren't going to buy cord, cardboard boxes to put on their shoes. So the, obviously, the, yeah, the, the form, how, how it looks, right? So we, we're dealing with the the form and function, how it looks and how it works. And um, there's design is a really hot area uh, of, um, of industry right now. I mean, everybody's talking about design. And a lot of it is aesthetics about design. But aesthetics just isn't something that looks pretty. But it's, it's, um, aesthetics is also how you interact with the thing. All right, so what are some... Um, what are some kind of goals you have if you want to have a good design? What does a good design encompass? There's probably a dozen words we can say here. Yep. Attracts. So, it, so are, are you emphasizing the attractiveness or the all kinds of people part of it? Both. Yeah, well, I, I bailed you out of that one. Yeah, both, right? So that's something we're going to be talking about is this idea of, uh, especially in web design, you want to design to be attractive to a wide variety of people, not just a small segment um, in most cases. What else is a good goal of design? Yes? Simple, but it works well and elegant. Simple and elegant works well. Yeah, usability. So, and that has become really key, especially in technology, especially as we have all these competing companies 
doing all different types of tablets and handheld smartphones and, and operating systems and cloud-based systems. Uh, you know, it turns out that tons of people can make tablets, but who can make a tablet PC that, you know, just performs the way you think it should? You, only, you, you almost don't even have to think about how to use it. You just swipe things around and it just does what you think it should. So the interface itself kind of goes away, all right? And, and the, the interface becomes as simple as possible so you don't even know it's there. You're actually interacting directly with the content. You, you, at least you have that impression. And that's the same way not only in web design but in manufacturing. You know, devices that are the simplest and the most useful are the ones we invest in. Right? If it's too complicated, the more complicated it is, the less attractive it's going to be. So there's these two aspects of design. There's the visual, the aesthetic, and there's also the functional. And in web design, we deal equally with both. So let's look a little bit. My show stopped. Darn it. Let's look a little bit at this idea of design, at, of this idea of um, visual design. So in the case of my shoe, good looks and functionality. I mean, that's what we're looking for, form and function. So I bought these shoes because I thought, I thought they looked cool. Chances are a lot of people think they look stupid. Uh, but I thought they looked cool. When I put them on, I was amazed at the engineering. I was amazed. These things, you know, weigh less than my sock, I think. They're so light and comfortable, yet they support my foot. Uh, so it has everything. And that's what we're going for in design. So you dizzy yet? So visual design. <laughs> Essentially, uh, four areas we look, look at in visual design of different you know, uh, levels of detail. So just like we can say, oh, those are, those are nice shoes, uh, then, we, then we step back and we say, well, how do those shoes go with your pants and your shirt? You know, do you have uh, complementary colors? So now we're stepping back. When we're looking at uh, design and, and web design, we might look at typography. So this is the most detailed part of web design. How does the character look? People actually sit and design characters, font types, to have different impact. So typography deals with the, the characters themselves. And, and typography is cool because not only do these, these typed faced words mean something intellectually to us, but the way the font looks also impresses us with some kind of emotion or feeling or type of, um, of, of view of how the, how the words are being presented. So typography, we're going to look at that. Not only the, the fonts, but line spacing, font sizes, the, the white space around the paragraphs, all of that tie into this typography. We'll do a little color theory. We'll talk about how to create colors out of lights specifically red, green, and blue lights when we're dealing with web pages. Um, and we'll talk about choosing complementary colors and how different colors affect the mood of a website. And it's ultimately, we want to try to, to express some type of a, of a goal to, to whoever's viewing our site. So that may be a serious goal. That may be a, a you know, humorous goal. We, we may have different intentions, and colors certainly play into that. We'll look at page layout. We'll study how web pages are designed to actually lead your eye from one spot to another as the page is loaded. So a lot of thought goes into that. What is the person going to look at first? Well, you want them to look at your brand, in this case, first. So that's big and top left. You know, we study how that works. Where do you put things where people are going to notice them first? How do you lay things out that allow people to look at information quickly? That's the thing about the web. We want to absorb everything as quickly as possible. We don't want to read three paragraphs. We don't want to read one paragraph. We want to read one word and say, oh yeah, well I know what this is about. It's not just you, it's not just me, it's everybody. That's the way the web is delivered. Now we're going to look at graphics. We'll just spend a, a very short amount of time because you'll find that as we start designing web pages, Making pictures to put on your web page is actually not such a big deal. You can create a whole interesting looking web page without putting any graphics on there. 
essentially the web page is your palette and you're painting it with background images and fonts and laying in the way that your content is laid out. So we almost do graphics as an afterthought to put the branding and different types of specific items on your page. So that's visual design. From there, we go on over to functional design. Uh, functional design is equally important. Actually, we begin with functional design when we start creating a website. Uh, we talk about information architecture. So the first thing we do is we say, what is our site and what is its goal? All right, what is the information that's going to support that goal that we have to deliver through this site? Okay, we collect that and then we say, how can we organize this information into a logical structure where as we present it in the web pages, people can easily find what they're looking for? That's information architecture. Then we're going to go ahead and talk about different user interface elements, navigation, things like that, working your way through the pages of a site. Accessibility will be a topic we cover all semester long, making sure that everything you publish to the web is accessible to everyone in the world, including and specifically people with disabilities. And they call that universal usability. Creating your website from the very beginning so that nobody has any issues accessing it. And not only people who might be blind, uh, but also people that may have a tiny little cell phone trying to see your, your website on a little screen, you know, or loading a page through, through, a, uh, through a, a cell phone network that takes forever, you know, really slow data rates. So all of those things can be disabling the users. We want to create web pages that get around that. The hot term nowadays is UX. Anybody know what, know what UX stands for? The user experience, UX. If you do a, do a search for UX, this is kind of like the sexiest career in web design right now. If you're into user experience, uh, you are cutting edge. And this is, this is talking about, you know, all through the process we collect uh, user feedback on our designs. But the user experience talks about how everything I've mentioned so far combines together to do that elegant design that delivers what you want uh, transparently, elegantly, and with beautiful aesthetics. That's what user experience is all about. In, in designers, students majoring in design, if you're going to get into web design, which is very likely, um, UX is huge. All right, from there we talk about this general concept of communication. I mean, the whole purpose of creating a website is to communicate something. Uh, we're going to, our textbook kind of uh, focuses on the idea of communicating business goals, products, professional websites. But I know sometimes we want to uh, deliver artwork, we want to deliver poetry, we want to deliver our opinions. Uh, so. Uh, all of it's about communication. And again, uh, we communicate uh, using words, the content of the site, and also using imagery and the basic layout of a page. So we communicate intellectually and subliminal, subliminally. I knew I was going to freak out over that word. Uh, we, we communicate information and emotion. All of this packed into words and visuals and sometimes sound. We're going to talk about editorial style. We write for the web differently than we write for anything else. We don't want to write like we write for a research paper or a term paper. Nobody will ever go to our web page. And we're going to talk about this idea of chunking information. You've got all this stuff to say. How do you break it down into small, compact paragraphs and deliver it really quickly so people can absorb it very quickly? So we don't have any fluff when we're writing for the web. We don't have to, you know, turn in 500 words. What we want to do is we want to turn in 50 words where every word is important. So we're not wasting anybody's time. That's what the web delivery is all about. No, nope, don't waste people's time. The world moves too fast for that. So we've got all this design stuff. And essentially, we will be talking about all these things that I've mentioned so far here in class and through our readings and through online discussions. Uh, the lab work in this course has to do 
with delivering the technical skills, teaching you the technical skills to take this all of this theory and actually do something with it. And it's kind of uh, an inverse relationship because the technical skills are only a very small part of my slideshow here, uh, but actually they are probably going to be the, the most work you do in here is learning those technical skills. Uh, we're going to be teaching these two things side by side. So you're going to be learning about design theory while you're learning the skills to actually create your web page. By Wednesday next week, uh, you'll have your first web page up. Okay. So what does that entail? Well, the, the primary markup language of the web is HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. We're in the fifth edition of that now. Actually, HTML5 is still considered brand new. It's been out a year, but it hasn't been formally passed yet. Uh, but HTML5, they say, is going to revolutionize the web. It's going to allow us to embed video, audio, animation, and interactivity right into the HTML code, you might say. Well, all of that's in web pages already, uh, but it's not in the HTML code. It's in these helper applications like Adobe Flash, you know. Uh, what's the Microsoft's thing? No, nobody's going to help me out of this mess. All right, I remember. Silverlight. Ha! See, I do have a brain left. Uh, Microsoft Silverlight delivers animation. But so have you gotten these error messages? You go to a page that says, oh, you need the more recent version of Flash. Oh, you need to download Silverlight. Now you got to wait five minutes while it installs. And I just hate that, right? HTML5 will do away with that, or at least that's its promise. Uh, but it's built right into the web code. Uh, so HTML is what we use to specify what goes on a web page. CSS is what we use to specify how it's going to look. Uh, CSS is state-of-the-art design for web. Everything you learn in here is going to be state-of-the-art. All right. Um, so we'll be dealing with CSS. And uh, your styles will be defined in a separate file, your HTML. So for those of you who came into this course thinking you're going to learn Dreamweaver or some kind of Microsoft tool to make your home page or whatever. This is much more serious than that. This is a serious college course. You're going to learn the technologies that make the web. And, because, and we're not wasting your time with this. We're not going too deep. If you really want to design for the web, you need to understand HTML and CSS. And it's not that hard. It's not computer programming. It's formatting stuff. You'll, you'll be doing it before you know it. And you'll be loving it. When you get into CSS, you're going to love it, believe me. Yes? CSS is a computer name? CSS is, it stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And um, so there's programming languages and there's markup languages. And markup languages have to do with formatting things on a screen. Okay. All right? So that's it. So this isn't pro programming languages are like, if the input equals true, then display this, you know, there's logic in programming. In markup languages, it's place this sentence in the center of the page using a large font with a purple background. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. So we're putting tags around things to identify how to display them. That's what CSS does. So I guess that's the end of my presentation, huh? <laughs> since my computer went to sleep. Now I know next time to make sure I take off the, the sleep function. No, it remembered where I was, kind of. Let's see. Ah, there was one more thing. This thing called the web. It's not so easy to learn how to design for it anymore because we're dealing with people looking at web pages on 52-inch high-def televisions. And then we're looking at those people, those pe same people are looking at the same web page on a four inch, you know, handheld cell phone. So we have to somehow accommodate all that. And this is a kind of a new element I'm adding to the course, designing for different platforms. I'm not sure how much we'll be able to get into it. But I hope to at least, uh, obviously, when you're going to design a web page for something smaller, you're going to simplify it tremendously. So typically what happens is you create your web page for a standard display and then create a second style sheet that can be used if that web page is 
access from a handheld device or a tablet. So every time a person goes to your web page, the server says, what kind of device are you using? And the device tells it with every web request you make, it tells the server what kind of computer you're on. And then you choose which design you want to send to the device. So that's, that's really where web is right now, designing for all these different platforms. And you know, we're, we're getting to the point where web is integrating with television, with entertainment, with video, with music. Uh, and so, you know, this idea of having television, uh, television from, from Comcast and web from someplace else, you know, it's all meshing together. So ultimately, as we study web design, we're really studying about all kinds of digital media um, public publishing. So this, this course is bound to be uh, valuable to you in all types of respects going forward. Sound good? That's this crazy thing that we call web design. Visual design combined with functional design in order to communicate ideas uh, built using specific tools. For more information about FSU's program in interdisciplinary computing, visit www.pic.fsu.edu.